Foot Phantom back. This time we will be talking about COVID Toes Part 2. Here we go. Okay, just a quick recap. So when someone has COVID, they enter this hypercoagulable state. It is very easy for their body to form blood clots. In this particular case, the blood clots actually formed within the small vessels of the gray toe. As you can see, the capillary refill time is zero. It should be five to 10 seconds in a normal foot. With these cases, immediate evaluation by an interventional cardiologist or a vascular surgeon is needed in order to evaluate the patient for possible arthrectomy as well as initiating anticoagulants. As you can see, even with vascular intervention as well as anticoagulants, the toe continues to demarcate and you see continued dusky appearance in regards to the gray toe. This is as week number four from the initial time the patient was evaluated. This is at week number six and you can continue to see the dark purple discoloration. This is the area where there is no circulation noted along the gray toe. As you can see here at week number eight, there is continued dark discoloration and the tip of the right gray toe has become ischemic as well as the proximal aspect of the gray toe. You will see a dark brown eschar. This is on the plantar aspect. You see continued demarcation where you can really identify the area of avascular nature. Here is a dark brown discoloration noted along the interphalangeal joint dorsally and continued dark discoloration noted along the distal pulp. There is continued demarcation noted both distally and proximally. Please do not forget to click the subscribe button below. Thank you. As you can see, there is continued demarcation and there is an area of visible change between necrotic tissue and healthy appearing tissue. Here you can see without any debridement that the toe is starting to turn the corner and is starting to heal with decreased amount of necrotic tissue and increased amount of healthy appearing tissue. Capillary refill time has now returned. Please note also there are some basal dilators that have been added as well, including a nitro patch dorsally, which also assisted with increasing circulation to the digit. You can see a small area of SCAR noted as well. In other videos at this point, I usually debride when there is an avascular state. It is very important not to debride and let the healthy tissue demarcate so you can identify exactly where healthy appearing tissue is and necrotic tissue is. You can see continued decreased size of dark brown eschar and the eschar along the dorsal aspect of the digit has completely resolved. You can see the pink discoloration as well as immediate capillary refill along the distal pulp of the digit. Here you can see a small area of red granular tissue. In this area, there was a small amount of dark brown eschar, which was loose, which was removed, followed by application of a dry sterile dressing. And a protective dressing was utilized throughout the entire recovery. This is at week number 12. You can see continued improvement of pink tissue, decreased amount of dark brown eschar, and at this point, you want to leave this intact. If you remove it, you can expose the digit and the underlying uh, subcutaneous tissue to infection. Here you can see continued decrease of 
brown escar. This is all without any debridement. Slowly but surely, the escar is sloughing off. You can see some scarring where the dark brown escar was, some discoloration as well along the interphalangeal joint dorsally, both on the medial and lateral aspect of the digit. You can see increased pink tissue and it continues to increase in regards to palpable pulses as well both on the, the dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial pulse were noted to be two over four at this point initially the dorsalis pedis pulse was non-palpable before vascular intervention finally the dark brown escar has completely healed if you like this video and you want to see more, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow. Foot Phantom out. See you soon.